Greetings, in this video I will talk about something called the general orthogonal group. It is related to the general linear group, so uh, basically this is a connection between linear algebra, group theory, abstract algebra. We have something called the general linear group with two parameters. In general is defined like um, the matrices that are n by n in size over the field of uh, f, which is the general notation for a field. It can be real numbers or complex numbers or some field in general. And then we have something called, what I want to talk about in this video mainly, is denoted not GL as general linear group of matrices, matrices, basically that's a group of matrices of some constant size. We have something called um, orthogonal group or general orthogonal, orthogonal group with again the same parameters, the size of the matrices considered and the field over which are their entries. And basically that is a subgroup of the general linear group, so I can write it as a set. So it's A, uh, matrices A in the general linear group for that particular size of matrices and that field over which the entries are, such that, and here, here, here the big point is, so such that A transpose basically works like the A inverse. So that is the point here. So for orthogonal matrix matrices, A transpose is, is the same like A in inverse. So, so the inverse of A is basically its transpose. So that's a very interesting pro property and very interesting property, uh, important property and very interesting property. So in the context of this, I will now give an example of two such matrices. By the way, orthogonal matrices consist of vectors, which um, if you put them in dot product, they will give zero. That's why it's orthogonal. So they or originate from uh, basically um, looking for 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 uh, we we can we can look for some bases uh, and have basis vectors that are perpendicular to each other. That will be called the orthogonal orthogonal normal basis, and then we can put that into a, a matrix, and that matrix will have these properties. These properties, which is interesting. So, uh, of course, these properties can be uh, taken into a greater um, lens in terms of explanation and context, but for this one, let's just look at the concrete example of it and see that actually they do form a group. And this orthogonal group is basically a subgroup of general linear group, and it does work out as a group because it satisfies all the properties, and the main property of the closeness that we overtake an operation, by the way, the operation is usual matrix multiplication, or um, it could also be called um, transformation composition because it's multiplication of matrices that could you know, represent some transformation, for example, the same um, in other words. But in any case, let's take an example and see that actually it's closed. And so if we multiply two matrices, matrices that have the, have the property that their vectors are orthogonal, uh, that their columns are orthogonal to each other, then the result will, can be such a matrix. And by the way, uh, there's also another important thing that for it to be right the vectors that are in the columns should have unit length so to make sure about that if you think about some column vectors that will go in dot product and equal zero as a result also make sure then then um, also make sure that uh, that you divide all the components by the vectors magnitude so that you um, make the um, vectors unit length. So then everything should be be fine. So let's say we have some matrix uh, one uh, over square root of three. Then we have minus two over square root of three. Then we have two over square root of three. Then we have one over square root of three. I want to multiply by another matrix, namely three over five uh, minus four over five, four over five, three over five, as follows. And um, Yes, for, for each of these matrices, uh, if you put the two columns they have in dot product, then that will give a zero. 
and now we can look at the result and see that it actually uh, will give another matrix that has such properties so basically um, uh, we can do the product which will be uh, 3 over the over 5 square roots of 3 um, minus 8 over 5 square roots of 3 so it's um, minus 5 over 5 square roots of 3 then uh, the second entry should be this is matrix multiplication um, should be um, 6 over 5 square roots of 3 plus uh, 4 over 5 square roots of 3 so 7 um, once again 6 uh, over 5 square roots of 3 plus 4 uh, over 5 square roots of 3 so it's um, 11 um, 10 then we have for the second column uh, we have minus 4 over 5 square roots of 3 uh, minus 6 over f uh, 5 square roots of 3 so it's minus 10 and again I already expect what this one is going to be uh, namely uh, minus uh, 5 um, basically minus 8 over 5 square root of 3 plus so it's minus 5 um, over 5 square root of 3 where these things cancel out basically but uh, we didn't really have to and these things also kind of simplify uh, we could do that so it's minus 1 over square root of 3 in both of these corners directly and then here it is uh, Yeah, as follows. And we can check that actually if we do a dot product of the two columns of this uh, final, final matrix, it will give um, 2 over 3 minus 2 over 3. So, so yes, it will give zero, 0. So the point here is that we have these special matrices that have this uh, dot product property, so-called orthogonal matrices, and yes, they do form a group. They fulfill the requirements. We see it's close when we multiply two of them. So that's interesting. And also, by the way, one thing that we might mention when we're already talking about orthogonal matrices, which we see form a group, um, as I said, if you have a particular um, orthogonal matrix, so I will, I will take the simpler of the two. For example, the second one. So 3 over 5 uh, minus 4 over 5, uh, 4 over 5, uh, 3 over 5. Um, then you can multiply it by its transpose and it should give the identity. So let's try that. So basically, I'm going to transpose it now. So the, the second one I'm writing is the transpose of it. So what is going to be the result? Um, again, this is matrix multiplication, so it's going to take a moment. But uh, in the end, it should be uh, the identity matrix. So the first entry should be 1. So let's see how that goes. Um, taking the first row and the first column of the right matrix. So 9 over 25 minus 16 over 25. Um, once again, uh, 9 over 25 uh, plus 16 over 25. So, uh, so uh, yes, that is um, 1. That is right. Then the second entry below um, is going to be um, 12 over 25 minus 12 over 25. So it's 0. 
then let's let's try the bottom right one so that's gonna be um, 16 over 25 plus 9 over 25 so yes 1 and this should be 0 so yes it is um, satisfied if you take um, or 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 for normal matrix then if you take its transpose and multiply it you see that actually that transpose of such a matrix is its inverse